Okay, the November meeting of the Board of Water Commissioners is hereby called to order. Reading of the minutes of the previous meeting. Need to accept further changes. I can move the Okay, the second. Okay, I got a first and a second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, carry. We'll wait on the presentation of bills and accounts until two of the commissioners finish the accounting of them. We'll jump into um, the drought update. All right, so Cooper Lake is essentially back up to construction level. We're about to be between 1095.8 and 1095.9. We can only go to 1096 at the moment. Um, we're closing the intake at night for the most part. So it's open 12 hours in a day. It's closed 12 hours a night. Um, let's see. We have shut down Reservoir 4. That pump has been returned to Xylem. We're no longer using that. And we are no longer purchasing water from the town of Ulster. Um, so in that sense, we could probably remove the emergency. I would recommend that we keep the alert in place for the time being. And we're still 10 feet down. Do the construction. That's the voluntary conservation. Do you have any calls of anybody complaining or asking you when it's been affecting them or anything? We've been getting calls about power washing. It seems like October was a very popular month to power wash houses. Um, but until we have a board meeting, we can't really do much. It's more the motion to declare the emergency, but we can't just lift it. I'm assuming we would need that motion too. Removed. Okay. Um, so, are there any chances? Spoke to the engineers about us going above 1096 at all. I have had uh, conversations when I go up there with Dale, the superintendent up there on this project site, the contractor. Yeah. And he doesn't see any reason why we won't go above at least to 1098, which is where we were last winter. It's more of the timing as to when we can do that. So and who makes that decision, the engineers or the contractor, or a combination of both? Um, Mother Nature, depending on what kind of work they can get done and when they can continue. So what, what's the point or determining factor when they're looking at whether or not they can cut the top of the dam this year? Um, and we can only go as high as the dam is. So if they cut down to the old core wall, that may affect the level that we can go to. But it is, it's possible that we would be able to remain higher than 1096, even past the winter. The contract does say we need to say 1096 for the duration of the project, but Dale is definitely open to letting us go as high as we can, as long as it doesn't delay the work that's being done. Probably a non-factor anyway, because as you get into the winter months, pretty much our usage starts to go down. I mean, the summer months are our highest yeah, but I'd like to be higher when the ice comes. Yeah, okay. Because it limits how much we can take in. Well, yeah, it's so. better to have as much water in there as yeah. they'll allow through the construction phase than we can get. So hopefully we can start going higher soon, at least for the winter. I don't have a okay. timeline on that. So we have any thoughts about selling more water back to the town of Ulster at all? Yes, but... So with the ice coming, if we're able to go within the next two weeks to 1098 or even potentially higher, it would be easier to get there if we're not activating Ulster just yet. So we could get through the rest of this month and some of December without turning them back on, we will get to the higher elevation much faster. So that was right. kind of, rather than activating them and turning them back off and then turning them back on, I was kind of waiting to hopefully by next Tuesday, I have a better idea of where we can go with the elevation. And have they given any indication of wanting to buy water from us again back at the normal rate? I missed a call from Jim, Jim Quigley this morning. I haven't had a chance to call him back, so I don't know what that call was a reference to. But. I mean, I, I know from the past, um, they actually requested the modification a little bit of the way we calculate the use, and we gave them benefits on the winter. Set up it was 700,000 gallons a day. We kind of calculated it on a quarterly basis or something or a yearly basis, correct? Um, 
I'm not sure I saw. I mean, I think they pay the minimum for the first three quarters, if I'm understanding how you're wording that. And then at the end of the year, they do the catch up. All right. What's, I got the impression from before is that they use less water in the winter. And so they can average out, they use 500,000 in the winter, and they could use 800,000 on particular days in the summer. By the tenth, end of the year, if it averaged out to 700 a day, which they they hit, this year will be different because we've had them off since July. Right. 14th or whatever day it was, we shut them off. Um, so, but we're not going to enforce that if we shut them off. And we can't force a minimum if they weren't on. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, Tech City start using water now, or do you have any projections on that? that they use all of them. Well, that increased the amount that. The town needs no. Or it's a separate, separate, it's a separate issue, separate meter, separate it's process. Still, oh, yeah. So separate. even though they're buying water, it's not the same as buying water. No, we're two separate purchasers. Tech City is separate from the town of Ulster. Two separate contracts. So they're we're, oh, they're paying us, but I thought you had originally told me that the city water goes to the town. And they're actually the one that uh, have the piping and everything out there. And um, no, there's, meter, for, there's two different pipes and two different meters. So the meter for Tech City, and then there's a meter. So this, that's, this, that's the only uh, vendor that actually buys water directly from the Kingston. Well, there's the, there's four separate water districts plus Tech City. So you have so Kingston. All the districts are private. And buy it from the city. Well, the town of Ulster, they're in the town of Ulster, but, but they're, they're separate. separate. I mean, I'm just more thinking about the billing directly and not going to the four districts in the town of Ulster are all lum lumped under the town of Ulster's 700,000 gallons per day contractual obligation. Oh, it is, except for Tech City. Tech City is a whole separate issue. We can get that. Most thinks that that should be tied in with them or something. So, well, yeah. They don't have a, a do they have a limit? Tech so City, there, is yes. no, there is no contract with Tech City at the moment. Well, oh, so when we do one, maybe we should do something like that, but that is the maximum amount that they can get from the city. Well, the previous there was a previous contract with Ginsburg, Tech City, right? Which had a minimum. Yes. It did. Okay. So and a, max, a and a maximum. But since Ginsburg is no longer an entity, right. we technically don't have a contract. But that's one of those things I think we need to yeah. work on is, I guess, the board has to just decide or discuss. We have a separate contract with I Park 87, or we have the town of Ulster sell them water through them. And does that, will that be included in the? 700, if it's included in 700, then you're losing revenue and right. not selling and not, the and not sell more to them there. We have the exclusive right to provide to that geographical area. Is that the only one we sell to that we're not uh, guaranteed we're going to be paid? Like, well, the town of Ulster, pretty much guaranteed you're going to be paid. I don't know if anybody's guaranteed you're going to get paid. You know. Because we can't lean on any of those accounts, right? So we can only lean on city water bills through the taxes. Through the taxes. Us leaning in the town of Ulster is that's where it's hard for us to ask to have the guarantee of money coming back in. And that's why we have the contracts in place to kind of add that extra level of protection for what it's worth. I mean, right now, I'm not jumping ahead into the, the other areas of what's on the Golden Hill issue is very similar, right? Right now, when we discussed this last meeting with Golden Hill, that's another you know, entity that we sell, sell, even though it's within the city, but we bill them like to the county. I mean, the county could decide not to pay, like your neighbor could decide not to pay us. There we lean, but I don't know, could we lean the, the bus garage if the county decided not to pay us, or if the nursing home, which is a private entity, 
all of a sudden doesn't pay us. So it's probably probably better to be selling it to a private entity than a municipal. And well, I guess we could probably lean against the uh, nursing home, the, the city property. The difference is that tech city is outside the city. So technically, you could, if they don't pay the bill, you can turn them off. Mm -hmm. It's a commercial user. Okay. The problem with Golden Hill is it's located within the city. And if you start supplying them, they have every right to request a water supply. And if they don't pay their bill, you can lean them, you can, you know, Put on their tanks. On and ultimately, if it's a commercial user, you can cut them off. Yeah. But as a residential user, I don't think the board of would let you cut off the residential user. I think it depends on how long it's been gone, too. It, it's a mess that should be. Uh, I think legally we have the right to shut anybody off. But isn't it a health issue? We cannot shut off somebody's water because of health issues? I, I don't think the board of would let you shut off a residential user. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I yeah, mean, I think we already I, talked about that years ago. Well, about, we, yeah. we could, I talked with Tim Rose of Health, and he said he'd like a heads up if we were ever to do that, but we could disconnect the residential because we had the issue with the service leaks. And I asked him specifically if we have somebody refusing to do this, can I dig it up and disconnect? And he said, You can, they're not going to get involved. But he would like a heads up in case he gets a phone call. Mm -hmm. So we can disconnect a single family residential home if we need to. Okay. In some cities, I mean, we we lean instead of shutting off, but some municipalities yeah. will shut you off for not paying your bill. Yeah, I know. Is it like the yeah? Is it? Because I think it's yeah. yeah. Legally, you we can. It's not our typical practice. No, we haven't. Yeah, yeah. So I remember. You know, we talked about this. I think it was brought up a few years ago about whether or not we were we you know why we we didn't we did not shut people off, and it was because of. It being with the health department and being a health issue. I have said that I don't it's know different in different different states or different places. You know. I think if you notify the health department well in advance, telling them the reasons why you're discontinuing service to an individual resident. Mm -hmm. You know, but if nothing. It was a building issue. I think where health department said, "Listen, you can always lead your tax bills." Mm -hmm. uh, I think for the most part, the health department wouldn't know yeah, what to get That was kind of the stance that Tim put to me. That we are getting the money back from the tax bills, right? Yeah, and that's kind of been the reason why we yeah. never replaced yeah. the issue. Yeah. So, okay. I'm just kind of went off on, on, yeah, on, on, there. on a tangent there on that. So, I, I guess what we're really back to is you're going to have a conversation with Jim Quigley about when they're going to be wanting wanting more water from us i owe him a phone call right and then the, the second thing i guess we need that's tied into the drought update is we need a motion to undeclare the emergency or rescind, rescind the emergency yeah and well, do we need a motion to continue the alert is that we didn't do a motion when we had the alert okay, before, so that's, that's, before we just we had an alert issue there was no official motion okay just, so it's just a Public service announcement type thing, because you know, but... there's no financial penalty associated Just with the alert. Voluntary conservation. Please be aware that we're doing construction and conservation is appreciated. That kind of stuff. Okay. So I need a motion to rescind the drought emergency that was issued. I need three months ago. Three months ago. Yeah. I mean, I never... Got a motion? Do I have a second? Second. Uh, any other further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Um, and then maybe you'll get something out to the press and on yes. the web pages and however else we will be out there. First okay. thing. Okay. I'm receiving the address. Do you want her to send it to me? She can't. Oh, oh my, you don't work on the other Okay. She said it's a text area. Okay. Text. Yes, she asked me about it. Did the paper reach out to you that last column? Um, you know, the last piece in the paper about yes, yeah, so that came through. Um, actually, got to the press office and I responded to that. So, okay, okay um, Cooper Lake. 
Um, um, touched on some of it before, but uh, in terms of work being done, they are preparing the flood, may have flooded today the copper dam. So yeah. that is the work inside there is complete. And that should be cut. I think the divers, I'm hoping the divers are going to be there Thursday and Friday to cut the copper dam out. They're continuing some of the other work. The seepage vaults have been installed. They're still doing a little bit of the grading. They're up to almost final grade on the, at the east side. Um, or by the spillway, that grading is pretty much done on the top where it's going to be when it's done. And they're continuing to do the work in the building in preparation of activating the water service. One holdup is Central Hudson. We need a meter box to make a connection to the grid. And they're having trouble getting their hands on one, so that may hold up the activation of the new service. And I will have more on that next week, but that could delay some work because they can't activate the water supply, they can't deactivate the old water supply, and there's a lot of work dependent on that old system being taken out of service. I mean, it is getting cold, so the earth work was going to be limited here in the next couple of weeks anyway, because they can't put clay down or all that stuff when it's too cold to work with. So the season was winding down anyway, but the goal was to get the new system online before Thanksgiving. And that may be in jeopardy. And once that copper dam is cut out, again, like I had mentioned before, hopefully we can start going a little bit higher, at least for winter, maybe longer. Okay. So everything's really on Central Hudson now getting this. It's on their subcontractor. Central Hudson's requiring a specific meter box that meets their specs. That is being difficult to locate. So they will not allow anything outside of that particular meter box. So. Okay, sounds good. And then once everything gets pumping, then we disassemble everything else. The also the line, so I'll kind of abandon in place and grab it. And that's that's be scheduled for next year then. I think possibly. So at this point, they're still they're still yeah. their schedule still hasn't been done this year, but it's okay. kind of dependent on getting that box and how quickly they get their hands on. Okay, so that's the key is that box. Okay. Get in there. We had 2020. Um, I think last meeting I had the meeting with CDM like a day or two after the last board meeting, and I um we're waiting on comments from DOH. That was one of the things I wasn't entirely sure what needs to be done. There's nothing expected from them, but they do need just a quick sign-off and then. We could have we're looking at maybe two two months to get the bid out. And most of that work is the valve work. Yes, as well as skater. The skater work is being done now, but that's a smaller part of the project. So they started looking at the plan to see what they need to do up there. And most of these valves are large. But down here in the distribution or up in the all in the distribution. But distribution starting from like what point it is. They're within the city. They're on Broadway and Fox Hall. Okay, well, all within pretty I'm much the city Binny itself, Water. as opposed to yeah. anything from Binny Water out or from. Oh no, it's all not there. No. Okay, yeah. so or the crossings where they come into it's the all, city. It's all down here. Okay, it's all within Green Kill, 
Broadway and okay. Elendor, Elendor uh, on Broadway. But... And it's going to be piece, so it's not going to be just one price. It's going to be price per intersection, so we can kind of determine which ones. How far you can go and if we're running out of money, you haven't. So I think it's essentially six or seven distinct projects is how it was put together. Okay. And that's how it'll be bid too, then? Yes. Okay. Hey, Golden Hill. Um, I'm still kind of waiting for, I guess, Penrose to get back to me, the developer up there. I sent him the request for a meeting either right after the last board meeting or before the last board meeting. Um, and I did get an email early this week, early last week, kind of asking for clarification on what I was asking for. and. I kind of told them that there is a model that CGM Smith has of the Kingston Water Department. The board would like that to be run to see what kind of changes may or may not need to be made up there to the system. And that's kind of a wrap we can hear back. All right. Tech City. Um, Bills are still being paid, Jane? Yes. yes. Um, so other than that, I did get a call from Bob Newhart, who is the, he's either an engineer or an architect. He had some involvement with iPark 87 in this terms of this new project, just kind of touching base that he owed me a phone call or an email. Um, nothing, no details or anything, but just I heard something from somebody. He had no details. But well, at what point in time do we reach out to have a meeting or come up with an agreement or a contract? I mean, just I would think that with the um, the town board slash planning board now receiving their basically site plan, conceptual site plan for, you know, what they want to do out there, which I think included like 480 or housing units and a bunch of other stuff that as part of that packet, they have to have given some sort of water estimate use um, in that it would be required if it came to our planning board. And so I'm assuming the town board slash health or planning board will have that same information. And I just think that maybe could go in your conversation with Jim to ask him to forward along that whole. I, again, maybe they're just having it as kind of a conversation starter with the town. Have board. they, but has that public meet, has that, what has uh, occurred so far on that type of meeting? I believe what I read in the paper was a couple of weeks ago that it was submitted to the town and then there was an article the next day and, um, about it. But I don't think that they've actually like workshopped about it yet, but I do think that the information was submitted as part of their overall site plan, um, which with that, you always have to do the, the fullest build out as part of Seeker. Um, and so I think that that's why they had to include, you know, all the different phases of their work. Um, but I, so that should have water usage in it, but I haven't seen it. And it could just be right on the website. I don't know, but they should send it to us, I would think. Which would be nice. So, okay, so what kind of line do we have going to the uh, um, um, I don't know. So you know, Jim? 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. Yeah. It's a good size. Yeah, totally. Because that was originally all designed it's, back at IBM. IBM was one you know, so 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 billion gallons a day. So it's, it's got plenty of capacity on the transmission lines. The question is, what do we have the ability to? Selling. Is the county still out there? I know. Officially, they've sold the properties. So I think that um, it's all I Park 87 now. So, the exception of those two yeah, parcels, that was two parcels yeah, in the back, but nothing counting on that anymore. So, they have ownership of all the land that was. It, you know, this and Golden Hill are almost like pairs. 
there was to turn the water off so we had to come through. That's, that's what it seems like to me. I don't know why. I don't know why anybody doesn't want to talk about this. It should be resolved. Jim quickly is well aware of it, and he's the one that brings it to their attention each time. I mean, we've written to these people and said, listen, we have to sit down, we have to get an agreement. Well, Golden Hill, we have. Yeah, but we haven't done anything more recently with I Park. We're yeah. we're basically waiting for them to take ownership of the property because the last contact we had had with them back in September, maybe, was that they were still trying to close on one of the parcels. I can't remember. Well, there, are there two or three tenants that did on that property? Have you heard I Park? Yeah. How who's left in that building? I really yeah. don't know we did that first one remember the small the small one where the guy did the did the closing and didn't realize there had been a water bill and then paid his water bill that was one that's in the back then that's the back where yeah. there's three parcels in the back there's three warehouses which there was a letter sent to the ulster planning board from the water department i don't remember when that was but you saw it um the telling them when they did their planning because planning board sent me the email with the docs for that particular those three yeah. and we replied back to them that you know the water department supplies the water for this and i had phone calls with them as well explaining it. it's kind of you know it's so a there are three situation going on that it's a car right it's three parcels i think it's one group of owners in the back and then the whole rest of the campus is now owned by i park 87 um, and that's where, and they still have some remaining tenants, which is what they're paying for now, that are still out there that they've basically allowed to continue to stay there while they figure out what their big grand plans are. But as far as the title ownership, there are three title owners to all that. I think there's only two. two, 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 two. I think just two now. So, okay. yeah, just two. I Park 87, National Resources, and then okay. the other folks that are right by the tracks there. And that's just one owner and for those three buildings. Well, somebody has to come forward and say, I'm going to have the responsibility for paying this water bill. And what we tried to do with Ginsburg was having like said about what do you do with the day? We originally considered sort of having the most bond, you know. And the board said no, we didn't want to go that far into my Ginsburg. <laughs> but uh, well, I mean, we've kind of backed off on any further. Well, there were two issues. One was waiting for them to actually take ownership of the property. Because right. there was no sex having a conversation with somebody that you didn't know actually who owned the property. So now I think we all understand that that is settled. Uh, I'm just hearing that for the first time tonight, that I didn't know. I mean, they always keep saying, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, but I never saw so then the and next quarter. And I think my part, part is open to a, having that meeting. I just, I don't know if this guy has that kind of authorization to set that. The one that's been reaching out and kind of just touching base, no detail on anything, but I have an email, I have a contact, I have a phone number. So, I mean, he is directly related, tied to I Park. Well, I think it begs at least an item on your conversation with Jim Quigley to find out where they are with, you know, town board, town planning board approval for a site plan that at least identifies what their plans are and what their water needs are going to be. And we have another legal difficulty. One of them, like, whatever the name is, the larger one can be listen, I will be responsible for the payment of this bill against that. And I'll collect from these people. That was one thing when Ginsburg had tenants. But when you have three separate owners of property, you can't have an agreement with all three of them that they will all be jointly responsible because it's, if one doesn't pay, you don't have to you have to get the work but the other two that did that don't have that issue. That you gotta sit down and talk to these people. Well, yeah, and that was why I raised the question. At what point in time do we have that? Do we send a letter and say it's time to meet with whoever? I think so. so yeah. Uh, yeah, I I do. I, but I mean may, maybe if you can have a conversation with quickly since you owe him a call back on on what he knows the status of that property and the plans for it. I mean, because like you said, I mean, I don't know if they're going to be owning the housing units or their plan is to, you know, because the town went ahead and subdivided. I don't know how many properties they even subdivided that parcel into. And if I park is going to further subdivide it, you know, with roads and another distribution network and then it becomes really messy. 
that's why I thought we had originally talked about talking to the yeah. town. If they would take over that part of responsibility. And we just send an order to them and they can deal with that. That was an odd how and Judy move out there. Well, we had upon be, what they know. We hope that it could be birth at that time we had the town of all streets. I don't want to do it. Yeah, and it was, it was a whole, yeah, he didn't want to take the transmission main on and so we'll, we'll have a conversation, still paying whatever bills they are that water they're using. We're not losing any revenue at this point in time. They're actually paying per the contract. They're right. Just, they're paying the minimum. Yeah, which is a lot. Which is a lot more than what they're actually using. So, I mean, we're not losing any revenue at this point in time, but you know, I, yeah, I think at some point in time, very near future, we need to have a meeting with them to kind of find out where they're going with this and what the, I mean, town has to decide what they're approving and how that whole thing is set up in regards to water use. I mean, it seems to me that if it wasn't for the water out there, but we wouldn't even be there now. That would be... Probably cornfields or something, and all this development helps the town increase their tax base. Oh, sure. I mean, so you think they'd be a little more uh, cooperative and try and help us there? No, figure it out or whatever. Well, we'll have a have a conversation with Quiggy and quickly and report back. See where we go. Um, don't hear anything. So maybe by next meeting, then we should have. Um, Set up a request for a meeting with at least the I Park people and maybe the town and move it forward. Okay, the budget. So we had the little discussion last week. My hope was today to give you another draft to look at, but it's not been a good computer day for me. Um, so I do not have that. I have looked at, you had two requests for me. Um, I looked at eliminating step and how that was, and that could allow us to decrease the percentage. Um, Maybe instead of set of four, we could be looking at three. It's not an exact science. It never is with water usage because it goes up or down depending on who's using it. But that would be a little bit of savings there. We could get rid of that. I think it's a 40 plus step. Mm -hmm. And you didn't, you weren't able to calculate what type of increase in income that would represent. It could be, I mean, this estimate, we're looking at 60, maybe. 60,000 a year? Yeah, for one year. I mean, that would not be that brand of an increase every time, because it would just be the simple. But for the first year, it could create slightly more, maybe around there. It's it's not an exact science. It's, it's, we're looking at past data to try to predict future, and it's not always mm -hmm. how it works with the water usage. Okay, so when will you be able to send us then, I guess? I got to draft that to you early next week. Yeah. And we can gonna look mail at Mail or email that? I can do both, whatever you prefer. Does anybody not want an email? It's only a couple of pages, right? Five or six. Yeah, I just got a new toner on my computer. Okay. I should be talking to you about that. I just bought an so we're good. Yeah, I did the same thing for that. And a whole ream of paper. So maybe I should, the water department should reimburse me for all the paper I printed off, huh? Good luck. <laughs> so, okay, so sometime next week you'll get us that. Yes. And we'll vote on it for next uh, the next meeting. Okay, correspondence. 
Um, I do have one thing kind of related to the budget. Okay. So in that draft budget, we do have money in there to buy new vehicles next year. Yeah. Specifically two new vehicles. Um, yeah, I've been having a lot of trouble getting bids. because I'm trying to get bids so I can get an idea of the prices. But I did get a bid, was it Friday, Monday, for a RAV4 to replace the uh, superintendent's car. So with something with all wheel drive. And I was just, I was hoping to get a motion to accept that bid now. It's a four to six month wait time on that. Is that through the state bid? It is. Okay. No problem. So that was, I think I had put five bids out for either an escape or a RAV4 or just the a general vehicles SUV hybrid. Uh, hybrid with all wheel drive. And it took me six tries to get one. And I only got one. So only one vendor. So before that, Order bank closes. I was hoping to be able to put that PO in because it is a four to six month delay from the time they receive the PO. How much money? $30,928.80. Okay. Yeah, I've received 31000 I know that seems like a strange number. I don't ever see that on prices, right? <laughs> it's the MSRP with a 2% discount, I think, oh, which that's, is the, that's, that's the, the OGS marketplace at <laughs> a minimum of 1% and they put in a bid for 2% discount. Okay. Um, so that's a Toyota RAV4 hybrid. That's what that is. All wheel drive. I have had no luck getting a bid for a pickup or a van to replace the meter. So it's hybrid part electric part. Yes. Okay. Yes. Saw you like pickup truck. <laughs> yeah, it's brand new. Yeah. And no, while standing in front, I had to pull back in. It's okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy to get. get right now. Okay, so I need a, a motion then. I'll make a motion. Second. Any further discussion? I mean, we won't be paying that until when? Based on what the bid says, a minimum of four months from today. Okay. So it'll, be, it'll be next year's budget. Yes. Okay. So I got a motion and a second to approve um, bid for the new vehicle. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Harry? Okay, anything else before we move forward? Matt? Um, we're not able to go to Okay. There it is. Okay, so we have, we have a request from Lindsay. Parks and Rec. So, I mean, wh where does this stand, Mayor, in regards to? I know the city was the original, it was a shared agreement between the city and the school system. Yeah. And then, in order to get another grant to redo, they were supposed to be selling their share back to you. Was that? Yeah, that's what we requested from the school districts. Uh, so in the end, they weren't comfortable doing that. Uh, but they gave us what we call capital and management control. And so we run the day-to-day -day operations. We're in charge of all the fiscal planning and future planning and building of the facility. Um, and they're basically like a silent partner who just takes you know, a set fee every year to us, and then they pay half of whatever our bonding costs are in the future. Um, but we technically, though, the deed did not meet. And so the deed still says that the school district is half owner. And and so hence the reason why we still get the water bills. Um, and it seems like the water bill didn't get paid on time. Um, and so I think what Lindsay's asking for is to waive the penalty. Um, 
So, so these bills are paid. It's just this particular one was paid late. Um, and it's actually at this point, they've paid it. So it would be a credit to the account because it has been paid with a due date of with November 1st. They paid the late fee. Um, but in the past, I know we, the board has waived them because of the municipal owner. So that was yeah. the request. So, and how, how much? Is the penalty? How much are we talking about? Um, I don't have that. Yeah, I think it was $14. It wasn't much. Yeah, it wasn't much. Maybe 20 between the two of them. It was accounts. 10%. Yeah. $14.96 sticks in my mind. I don't know why. Maybe that would count. And I had already previously talked to the board. You know, earlier this year about needs and trying to convince the board to not charge you. Charge it all. Yeah, but we've talked about that for a while, so I understand. Uh, but yeah, we, we we wish we had full ownership of the facility. I think it would be a lot easier for all of us, even though, you know, it is a silent part, especially now that we're about ready to redo the stadium. So we um, have to run in potentially new water service, and we've got. The pool there, which we don't pay for, but either but then it would have been nice to just run it all the same line, but still may be able to, but with a separate meter, it's gonna it's fine. We're figuring it out. So. Well, there are probably 50 50 decisions and everything too, right? No, so that's what we did. So that's the one good thing is that you know, as part of us agreeing to um, you know. Let them kind of have that silent partner role as we we get to make all of the decisions. Um, at the data now, which is good. Uh, but they still have to, you know, chip in and pay um, for their share of the capital we decide. But that was kind of the caveat: is it okay? You won't give me the 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 the, the, the deed, but you still have to give us control because so like turf replacement, all that stuff they have to do 50 50. Yeah, yeah. So we we bonded 18 million. Um, and so in the end, after our grants, we have about $5 million for some grants. Um, and then after that, then it will be split between the two, the city and then the school district. And then they'll have probably a 20 year bond to pay off their share um, while we pay off our share. So it's good, at least the there's a broader tax base paying for the improvements, which is good. They never seem to generate enough revenue to pay any kind of bond if I have to just yeah, I mean, there's it's definitely a municipal investment for sure, you know, more of a public good, but hopefully, we'll attract more national and statewide competitions and things like that. But it's good for the it's good for the rest of the community, I think. Yeah, it's so I mean, yeah, I think yeah. the hotels, the restaurants, yeah. the shops, I mean, when we have these large, sure. you know, tournaments and events, and mm -hmm. um, that's really where I think the economic development is, but just in user fees at the stadium. You know, definitely not pay for itself. They always so you just have to pay the turf and the turf's are like eight hundred thousand million dollars. They never could generate that revenue. But it's gotten so much use this year, which is good. So. Four dollars seventy six cents. What are they? Four dollars and seventy six cents. Four dollars. That's one of them. There's two. Oh, there's a two of them. Dollar count. Oh, eighteen thousand. Um, maybe if that yeah. there is there's concession and yeah, um, right, right there. lockers. $32.84. Is the other ones? Yeah. So, so those football players taking too long of showers. 32 and four or something, so like $37 plus or minus. Yeah, and they'll be relevant if it. Well, they've been paid now, yeah. so it'll be a credit to the account. Is there any legal issues with this bill? Okay. Uh, discussion in favor of granting the Move of the penalty, penalty or reimbursement of the penalty? I would just say maybe till now I don't want to buy me trash. You have to wait for two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only the only problem I have is 
you know, when other residents or commercial properties come and ask to be waived. I know I brought one when I was on the council and uh, no, 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 it's always the answer. So I uh, don't. A yeah, part of this, this is, is in the city. It's not for profit, right? I mean, it's not G Stadium, is it? It's part of its municipality, right? That's what the whole argument was. The city is part owner yeah. of this yeah. profit of so one agency can be the works for me. I mean, I mean, that's not an argument. I mean, that's, that's the only reason. I mean, we that technically don't charge them. So for any other use, the reason we don't pay. The reason we charge them for this is because we don't pay late fees on our bills. They're okay. But they charge us late fees so, because we're okay. so. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to waive the late fee. Or, um, uh, we want to say it's the uh, city recreation, recreation department. Uh, or that they built for Jeets Stadium, first quarter Jeets Stadium water bill. I would refer to it as a Jeets Stadium, but I just said the Parks and Recreation water bill. Okay. Okay, that sounds better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So okay. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second. Third. Okay. Those in favor? Aye. Okay. Opposed? I carried. I have another letter here from the owner of 47 Third Avenue. She is requesting to have late fees removed as well <laughs> as bank fees removed from her account. So she made a payment through our online portal. And she's claiming there was a glitch on our side, the water department side. And I researched this today. And in looking at her past payments, because she had made her past three or four payments on the portal, I can see that her account number was shorted one number because there's only seven stars on it. And the last three that have been accepted had eight little stars on it. So that was, the, the error was no account found. And I would say she's missing a number in her account number. She was shorted one number. And that's something she needs to put in for yes. the transaction to occur. Yes. It's not something on our end. That would be my yes. But, and you can explain that to her and we'll come back to her. Okay. And have you have you have you done that already? You explained that already to her? No, no, I, I found that's that this morning. I, I haven't spoken with her, but I was looking at her history okay. on the portal this morning, and that's, I mean, it seems pretty clear okay. what she did, because she paid it again after it bounced back, and you can see the eight little mm -hmm. stars plus the last four. Okay. We can only see the last four. Well, then I guess it's not a glitch on the water I, department's I would fault. agree. Yes. It's on the operator's uh, side. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. The writer and so do we need a motion to deny back. that then? Well, he made it seem like we need a motion. You don't need a motion. Oh, you don't need a motion. Okay. Let me say, go right ahead. Okay. Okay. Well, they have that. We looked at the, you know, uh, research the transaction, and it looks like it was an error on the behalf of the person putting in the account number. Okay, right. the motion we have second thing. I'll second it. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. What was it that the dress map? 47 30. 47 30 Avenue. Okay, anything else? Uh, I have a correspondence out rather than in. So there's a letter here that uh, Bill had prepared to T-Mobile. And it's kind of referencing the agreement from 20, 2006 that we had with, at the time it was Nextel, and then it went to Sprint, and now it's T-Mobile. So the agreement stated that taxes associated with the Florence Street Tower 
because now there's cell equipment up there. We are now receive a tax bill from the city mm -hmm. and the school district that they would pay their portion of those taxes. Now that T-Mobile has absorbed, bought, merged with Sprint, they reviewed those agreements and they've determined that they do not have to pay taxes on that. Um, there's been a letter I asked Dan, um, I'm blanking on his last name, Baker. Baker, to put a letter together stating that all taxes associated with this parcel are related to the equipment on the tower and that there would be no tax bill had it not been for those. And they currently owe us about $14,000 in taxes. That's their portion. So Bill has put a letter stating basically that, um, that we're obligated to pursue the payment unless the payment is received and the license agreement may be at risk of cancellation. And I bring this to the board just because they do pay rent and they're paying their rent on time every month. Were they to take this letter and say, we're done with Florence Street, that would be, we'd lose more in rent than we would in the taxes they're refusing to pay. So I just wanted to make sure that the board was aware of it before we sent this out. I mean, the previous owner, yeah. cell tower owner, Hey, next time sprint always pay. Hey, the problem with it was that I think originally when we did this, there were no taxes on the tower. Obviously, we didn't pay property taxes on it. Mm -hmm. So the way the agreement was drawn, it said that if there are any, I suppose in other states they call the ad valorem taxes, you know, would, would be for equipment as opposed to real estate. And what Dan Baker said is this tax is related solely to the equipment. Now, in their agreement, they said we don't have to pay property taxes, which is true. They don't have to pay school and, and property taxes because we don't pay any property tax, but this assessment is for the equipment. They have an argument, but I think they're wrong. And, the, and Dan Baker gave us a letter to the effect that they are wrong and pointed out to them. So I think it's just the fact that they're, somebody's looking to say, oh, we're going to pay property tax. It's not a property tax. It's an equipment tax. And we didn't want to say that originally we have a letter, you know, if you don't pay this in 30 days, come get your equipment. That we talked about is maybe just said uh, if you don't pay it, you're at risk. I'm looking at it now. If you think it's too strong, you want it softer, you'll be taken out of that, but take that sentence out. How, how long is this contract? Oh, the good the not had to go on since last January, right? Uh, no, but the, the contract itself, it was a 2006 contract, five year terms. Um, and signed in April 2006, so long time. We're coming up on. The next one would be 20 years, I guess. So it won't be until 26. 26, though. How much is the tax? Their share was 4,900 and 8,300. A year? Yes. But they also pay rent. I don't know what the rent check is a month. 2,800? And that they pay on time every month. Yeah, they do. And how long have they been paying the taxes? Since. January. So it, Sprint always paid it, and T Mobile paid okay. last year when but they were still in the process of, I think, mm -hmm. I kind see. of overtaking them. And now that they're kind of going back and they're reviewing the things that they purchased, oh, I see. and they're okay. saying that mm -hmm. Sprint and Nextel were doing this, but mm -hmm. they don't believe they need to. They need to. Okay. And that letter from Dan went out, I want to say, back in August, and they're very slow to respond and they're still refusing. So they kind of okay. mm -hmm. are. There. So Dan already sent them a letter. He gave me a letter on letterhead to mm -hmm. send it to them. Oh, so okay. He didn't send it to them directly, but okay. he supplied it to me on the city letterhead. Okay. And it went out to T-Mobile. Okay. That was back in August. I believe so. I don't know the mm -hmm. date. So this is the second correspondence. Mm -hmm. And we're sending them, telling them that. If you think it's not too strong. I don't think it's too strong. Mm -hmm. because we've already had a corresponded with them. Yeah. And, and already... Mm -hmm. Explained on our side and what and, I mean. These are these are common there. taxes that cell carriers are paying, probably on all of their towers. I mean, well, the ones the other ones I represent, they don't pay any property tax at all. They just pay for the monthly rental, and then the landlord pays the real property tax. My church, we have, and I think it's T-Mobile also. They pay the taxes. They again, the previous owner was Sprint before T-Mobile bought them out. I mean, they're always late, but they eventually come through. We have to send them the bill again or whatever. But that was my question is, are, could we reattach like an invoice? 
to that again when we send to this letter. That. Yeah, we can do it. Just because right. they have something they could be able to find and then rip it off and then give the invoice to the the right people. Well, I, mean, I, know, I know with my church, we ended up going to their online service somehow. You write up a ticket. Yes, that's how you pay. That's how right. you get paid typically. We see. You write a ticket and say, you owe us for you know, yeah. non-payment of this thing. So it's all very slow. So basically you submit it to Sprint's portal and then it gets pushed into T-Mobile's portal and T-Mobile reviews it. So mm -hmm. the Sprint portal is still- yeah, one like 15 years. different people you deal with these tower companies. This guy's a site manager. Yeah, yeah. it's Sprint. This guy's going to say church. So, so we, we collect 28,000 and we're going to have jeopardy of paying five Yeah, that's why I wanted to make sure the board so, I mean, the letter went out. So if they get it and say, all right, we don't need this, question. they call and show up and take their equipment off, then, I mean, we would still have AT&T there. They would just now be 100% responsible for those taxes instead of 46 Well, isn't the taxes based upon the equipment? Yes. So, I mean, I mean AT&T would only be paying taxes on their, their equipment, and T-Mobile would be paying taxes on their equipment, and if T-Mobile removes their equipment, then but there shouldn't be any change to AT&T's But taxes. we would lose the revenue from T-Mobile monthly. I, I think so, if you were a correspondence out, you don't think it would just go all of a sudden, I don't, okay? No, I, that's, uh, that's I why don't. I wanted to make sure everybody was aware, just in the event that they do. And you wonder why we lost you know, yeah, I think it's half of our rental right. income. Because we're in the right. It's something that, you know, it's so. Do so you know their equipment? Is this the 5G or is this? I don't think there's 5G in Kingston. Did the taxes go down? What job took this stuff up? I'm waiting on a call back from Stroud. <laughs> yeah, where do we stand with Web Jogger? They're supposed to be gone. Okay. We told them they we're done then. But they have equipment left in the shed. And I've been trying to reach them to be like, why is there still equipment here? Because we sent them a tax bill because there was still equipment there because we never told us they came and got anything. And Jane sent the invoice to them and they said, you, you got rid of the contract. We're no longer there. Change your records. So we went up to the building to check and there's still equipment in there. So I called. I got one person on the phone. He said he would look into it. I called. I gave him two weeks, called back. I was told that he wasn't in. But her belief was they took everything they wanted, and that was it. <laughs> yeah. And my, I want to know what's on the tower and what's in the building. I'm not climbing the tower. I'm not having anybody downstairs climbing the tower. <laughs> so I, I don't know exactly, and I haven't done any clarification on what they did leave behind. I just wonder if the Vegas will reduce taxes by the amount that they assess for what jogger. They may. I mean, we're talking what web jogger share like two hundred dollars. Yeah, pretty much. So I have to give them an eviction notice and then when I put their equipment out on the road, <laughs> kind of like all the couches and coffee tables, you go past the, the apartments that are evicted. So okay, okay. now I don't have a problem with you guys with you, with you sending that oh. letter letter out and attach invoice. I'll bring down to the copy and you put the invoice to it. I mean you did fill out a a whatchamacall with <clears throat> on your online system. There's been several tickets. Man. Okay, tickets. Yeah. They have any other towers in the same? I, no. Yeah, I mean, I think T Mobile um, Sprint does uh, have a lot. I think that they actually, I, I, I'm a Sprint customer that's switching to, uh, they're doing the whole transition to T Mobile myself still on these mm -hmm. things, but I think I have 5G. Um, but I do think that um, a lot of the, the the towers is mostly that that service. So if I get um no, no so that's their kind of regular service and then the 5g are now all the little antennas that are popping up on top of like the stewards like um, yeah they're not, our, not as high and yeah our utility poles have got a couple in different places already um but i do think i, I think that they're going to want the service still because they looked at um i think a couple of the cell phone companies looked at putting one on uh flatbush yeah i'm across from my mark place couple of years ago and that fell through. And so there aren't a lot of options for high ground in Kingston. They're very difficult to deal with. I do the ones in Port Young, all those towers. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy what they're doing. These companies are merging. And like if you have two buildings up there, they're going to have the best sell for iron and say, one will buy out the other and say, now I don't have to pay for these. I'm going to put all my next sell on this. Right. So I don't have to pay you more. 
and it's, it gets quite a bit of weight on towers. That, and you're dealing with 15 different agencies within one company. They're very difficult to deal with. Yeah, I know. <laughs> dealing with my church. <laughs> What's like five G is coming out. Same door. Everybody else repeat. That would get one on City Hall. On top of the tower. Uh, yeah. Put it right in the bell tower. That's it. Somebody say it. Anything else, Matt? In terms of correspondence, I think that's it. Yeah. Um, Matt, you have the other wells? Yes. So the board got the proposal for potentially updating the rules and regulations. Yeah. The water department. I think some place. So this kind of came up this summer. And okay. I've spoken to the health department and their response was, well, typically, this would be written into the rules and regulations or the city code. And I can find it nowhere where it's just that says you cannot drill a well in the city of Kingston. So I would like to add that. Um, I attached what the city of Newburgh uses. Now, is it driven point separate from a drilled well, or is that? I, well, the only thing I had to do is simply drill is you can drill a well, you can't use it. So, so with the use of drilled wells was like you said, prohibited wells, drilling wells. I mean, I guess. I used, did I say drill well in my, no, is that how I worded it? So I did, and then in like the language, it's, it's not, oh, it's, it's, it's construct, dig, install, or use a well on a property. And basically if there's already one in existence, it would be registered with the water department so we would know where they are and what they do. So um, was this talking about like the, when you dig down to the water um, table and for just watering your lawn and things like that? Right. Yeah, because I know well, so that one right down the street. Right. It's in a pretty dominant. Yeah. So what's what's the reason why we don't want them? I guess I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah, because it's just water table. I mean, that's, I'm you know I I, so, yeah, I don't have one, but we we're we we're considering doing it because I'm a big gardener, and I don't you know not want to be especially with the drought. I wanted to be able to water my uh, garden and things, and I thought if I could. Just use that. That would be wonderful to get around. And that's supposed to be connected to the potable water. That's that's my problem. Well, I don't know. If I guess the question is, how do you, if you don't know who has a well point or even a drilled well? So as long as we would register it, if it's okay, if you would do it, but register it so you're aware of it or what? So and check it. Could you create a a registration system with the water? And just make sure there's a there's no there's a physical. No connection. There's no physical connection. No cross connections. You're right. Contamination. Yeah. And you can charge, you can charge like an annual fee to, to have one. I mean, you should always say, like, if you're going to have one of these point wells, it's going to be, you know, $100 to get one initially registered and inspected, and then $25 a year, you know, to be able to have one. I mean, that way you're also, you know, not encouraging them to be everywhere in the city. Someone has to really want to use it for, some sort of, you know, gardening. Well, you can't use them everywhere because well, we're you'll be able to get down by a hammer. I mean, you know, like water bags. Suppose they have water bags and drill a well. Is that going to be permitted? Or about a car wash? So about commercial use like that. Where are you, you know, the, the people, the Ulster uniform or something, they supposed to say, we, all we do is we wash stuff there. We could just use drill wells. We don't have to use city water anymore. You're losing customers. Yeah, I know. That's Which is why when I call out the like it's typically it written into the regulations that you cannot do this. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I just thought there was areas in the city that aren't provided for. And they have well, an we option like on First Avenue or something. There, there was, I mean, there's a handful of customers that have wells. But there might be more and more areas in the city where they want to develop and they can't develop because they can't get water. Well, if they couldn't get water, then I guess that would be. Well, that would should have to be in here then. Well, it's expensive if they go to work. So that's why I didn't do anything, but this is kind of just like this is what I've seen. Well, who's well, responsible? Even, and this is just directly from New York. It's not responsible even. for providing, like you said, up, up by Mickey's Igloo down, there were a couple of things where they had to run a long service line to get to it. That's so. all. Yeah, well, we were that's in the right. process of running some a distribution some line. Rock. We don't do it. They would have to distribute that as a long service line. But yeah, just to go back to your point, 
but just about like the laundromats and the and the car washes. But if they would drill a well for water there, wouldn't that then have to be connected to something? Like, can we make? I don't know. I'm just well, considering. Yes and no. I mean, they could drill a well and just have it connected to um, the, the, the washing process. I have a whole separate plumbing. So this all started. There was a property in the city that we went to inspect the backflow. They put a backflow application in. It didn't say what they were protecting it from. We showed up and maintenance Ryan downstairs in the maintenance discovered that there was a drilled well, like a six inch drilled well there, and it's connected directly to his water supply. He could shut off the water supply from us and use this well, depending on what the output of this well is. Mm -hmm. So okay. now there's been letters mm -hmm. going back and forth. About how it's not mm -hmm. appropriate. I talked to the health department. He said he'll, he's willing to get involved and you just mm -hmm. can't have this. So yeah. there's no, yeah, and he sent the letter back saying, oh, I looked at your rules and regulations. And it says, no, there's nothing saying I can't do this. Yeah. That I have a backflow in there. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I remember being in houses where they would have a well and they'd have municipal water and they'd use the well for their toilet. Right. Strictly. Mm -hmm. And that was like going just strictly from there. Now that I'm thinking about it, they'd be cheating us two ways. They'd be cheating us on the water sewer use and they'd be, uh, you know. And it's not even about the water use, it's more about the protection of the. No, I understand the water supply. supply. Yeah. You base the sewer rate. Right? Yeah. They could be just somebody like, you know. I was thinking of you know, the drought. I could use the, all the swampy water down there to water my plants. And it would be tricky you know? too. Like, but, um, if everybody registered their well, how do we, I don't know how we maintain that they're not connecting it to exactly. stuff. Like, we don't yeah. have the manpower to go every, yeah. every year to check every single well, That would be like a, a plumbing inspector's job. Uh, he would go out. It's a, it's a health risk, though. Yeah. I mean, so that's, 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 that's my problem. concern. Mm -hmm. Is if people start doing this because we were in a drought this year and potentially, I mean, it's going to be well again next summer. I just I mean, try to that, avoid that the health in consideration the ones that have it already that's never been inspected. Right. So if you're going to do it, I think you should find a way to get in those other homes. I mean, I would want it just well, it'd be difficult to yeah. to do it every no, uh, to keep up on it. Just yeah, we want something. But if you're registered, we would want to see how it's hooked up. It's just it's not going to be an easy thing to do. It's going to require man. It's easy to get people to register when they need to put it in when they have it in already. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's going to be, be very hard to find. That. Is it possible to have a kind of ban the installation of wells except for those that are for residential irrigation purposes? Um, and you know. Then create a system where you're not then dealing with people using it in their homes or for, you know, for kind of non-irrigation purposes. Um, I'm just thinking if there's also any like small community farms or gardens that pop up that, you know, I, I, I what I hear is especially of people that have kind of the larger garden areas slash farms in the city is that the sewer charges that the city charges are tough. And yes, there is a sewer process that they could go through um, but uh, as a current city code it's pretty onerous to try to get those the documents that difference i mean drops um and so i mean that could be one way to you know we're already currently encouraging people to use rain barrels <laughs> right and so like having a, a a point well versus using water that's coming off of your asphalt shingles like when we talk about health and quality of the water that you're using like it's sometimes much safer to use your well, potentially the well water, than it is to use the water that people are capturing in their homes um, and using it on their plants and things like that. And it's also, you know, we're not seeing that water that's saved. I mean, I have two rain barrels attached to my house, and I was able to pretty much water everything outside all summer because we did have those occasional heavy rains and filled up all my rain barrels. But it's also lots of asphalt shingle debris all over mm -hmm. my rain barrels when we were done. So like. I still have to wash the tomatoes really well afterwards, <laughs> you know, after I spray the water all over them. And so I don't know. I mean, I, I do get the point that we don't want people to use wells for household purposes. Completely. Well, and there, but, there's also an issue about just limiting the number of wells being drilled because every time you're popping a well into the aquifer, you're opening up the possibility of contaminating the aquifer. Again, I mean, we're not if we're not talking about potable water becomes less of an issue and 
lists up an issue that our municipality is using surface water from 20 miles away. But I mean, if you had a municipal well that was in the aquifer and other people were drilling wells not far away and somehow they didn't drill it and seal that well properly, that, then you're opening up the possibility of contamination of the municipal well. We technically don't fall in that category, but um, then what did the health department, what advice did they give you? So on this particular one where the gentleman is claiming it's strictly for pool and water in his garden, I was told that if he refuses to disconnect it from his public water supply, they will get involved and they will tell him if it's going to be that way, he needs to hire an operator to operate that water supply because it's a source of water. So he has a source of water connected. And yeah, I know the health department has limited connected to his house. I think if there is a health department regulation about that. Yeah. So he said you have to follow all, you have to do all part five, follow all part five in terms of treating and operating. So you would need to hire a licensed operator to have that connected because it's a new source of water that he's created in his home. So it comes into the monitoring this. Like we only know it was there because this guy happened to apply for a backflow. If he hadn't done that, we would have no idea. No idea. There, and there would have been no protection. So he knew, he, knew well enough, enough. he knew enough to get the backflow device because he read our codes and regulations. And how, how um, when was this well drilled? Is it recently or is it an old one? Sometime this summer. It's, oh, this summer. He did it because of the drought because he wants to build a swimming pool. So he connected it to his home. So he runs it right off his hobo spibs, from what I understand. I haven't seen it myself, but Ryan has. And from what we can tell, it's directly connected to his, oh, his home. He could easily. Oh, so, I think that's a health department regulation there, too. Yeah, that's why. I, and in my next response, Tim said, feel free to use my name and title and his opinion. And he'll get called if he still okay. refuses. So um, it's how we monitor. Who's doing what? I, I don't know. So it's, his his argument to me when I asked him to disconnect it from his public water supply was, "It's not in your regulations. I can do it." This is the United States of America for his words. If I have a well and I have a car wash or I have a inventory for laundry and I use the well, do I have to pay a sewer tax? Yeah, I mean, I guess anything that I think in our code, anything that goes into our sewer system, we're able to. And how do you measure it? Is it on a water meter on your well? Well, we've, you know, depending, um, you you can put meters on sewer, uh, but we like when we have some clients like Ulster Uniform and others that actually have, I don't know what type of meter it's called, but it's kind of like the reverse of because they evaporate so much. So they actually are on well, one of our very few accounts where they actually, you know, don't have to pay as much for sewer. They measure their their sewer. Yeah, they measure. Yeah, I don't know if there's fancy work, but, but yeah, they measure their sewer basically. And we don't have very many. So you can put a meter on your sewer. Yeah. I'll see uniform that then. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm not looking for a motion. I just. I found a potential model, and I just wanted to bring it to kind of this could become a thing. Where are you going for this? Newburgh, city code. City code of this. And the proposal would be to add this language or similar language to our water. I mean, the third page right. is kind of like, it would be the next, next RSO would be 12. So I mean, that would be something potentially. I mean, there's something. How about, could we just add, and maybe this would satisfy any future concerns, uh, could we just add that, you know, an, an exception could be made by a vote of the Board of Water Commissioners if one was so needed? So that would you end the up problem with first Avenue, I mean, something right. like that. Or if you can apply for... Or you've got a homeowner that really, really wants to water their plants and really wants to... Take the time and energy to come to the board, explain what they're going to do, show pictures of where they're going to put it, what type of well it's going to be. The only problem with that is when that person leaves, the next person comes in is going to have that well and do whatever he wants with it. Right. I, mean, I just, this guy did it because he read the rules and there was nothing in there about water wells anywhere. Yeah. So he said, I can do what I want. And so I put a backflow in there, I'm good to go, which isn't the case. Just because you have the backflow doesn't mean he's fully protecting the public water supply because they do potentially fail. Yeah. 
So that was kind of where I could strictly health risk. Well, technically that, but once he puts that backflow prevention device and he has to have it inspected and on, on a yearly basis, right? He does, but I mean, I mean, that's, I mean, that's, part, the that's part of the problem when, uh, when, when government starts developing regulations and stuff, and it's like most of the time they become unenforceable. So it's like the health department is ready to enforce it. He can have a connection to his water supply from us. Well, obviously, for that particular case right now, that's the avenue we need to. Yeah, that's why I don't, I don't need the, because this wouldn't apply to him anyway because it's, it's already there. Existing. But I, I like the part where you know, any well should not be connected to the water supply in any house building, resident, you know, furniture. That should definitely be in there. That way, that would eliminate all that. When the people put those, like, what do they call the point well? Point well, do you have to, is that drilled? Or no, you no. just you just drive a pipe in the ground. Yeah, this yeah. comes. So up. I mean, maybe there is an option for us to also look around that, work around that language, where basically, if like it's commercial, if it's a drilled well or a, just a wet. I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's some language around there too. If we want to be able to leave some wiggle room for someone to you go out in their backyard and drive a stake down or in their yard. Yeah, these like, people have had stakes in the ground forever. Yeah, especially good. She you like the emerald down, right? Right. And you in in my neighborhood, where I live, there was one in my back of my property, next door, all around. They've since not used them. Right. Brian's a lot just, of, yeah. just did one last year. Who? Brian Smith. Oh, did he do one? That was. I know one. Rob up the street. Two houses. I put the one in for him up the street. No, so no. I know. Okay. There's one on Harding Street. Even talking like that, we still don't want to connect it to the water supply. No, right, right. So no. So there can be no physical connection exactly. with any kind of well. Exactly. But if we have a regulation or not, there should not be any physical um, connection. Oh, we can make that. But I would like something written in the constitution. Can I refer this to whatever committee we have set up that yeah, we'll deals? Right. I mean, so, yeah. I don't have to look at our committee structure out here. I haven't looked at our committee structure in a long time, but um, I appoint Mr. James Noble to be on that committee. Hey, this is mark up the draft. All right, I guess you, I'll, I'll work with you on it. Right. You and I can sit down and discuss. Well, I'll, I'll go online, find some stuff. Okay. So I'll I'll work with the two guys. I know Tim Rose at the health department wants to work work with the health department too. So and, and I'll even talk to the fire inspector, the building department down there and see so, what yeah, what they're running into, what they think would be good, and you know, stuff like that. But yeah, pursue uh Tim Rose and health department in regards to this guy. Where is this program? Bergman Street. Well, Burrow. Burrow Street. Burrow Street. That wasn't even on the, was it on them? Uh, I it, 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 it was on the agenda right. thing, but it was in the, right. it was in there. I didn't include it on the agenda. Um, the two memos that Deal with personnel issues. Is that just I mean, our information at this point? Oh, we need to go in, we need to approve this, right? Yes. Okay. I mean, you don't need to, but that's well, don't we normally do that as yeah? I mean, I'm looking for a motion that you agree we, with. We accept it. Yes. Accept if you two two agree with these two promotions, then yes, I would need I mean, I have no problem. I, I, I tried to spell everything out here. So if you have questions that need to go to the executive session, then. But, I mean, I put it all I mean, basically I there. I, I, I get the impression. I mean, this is kind of a normal uh, department process and operation on, on these cases. I don't yeah. know. And, and both have been included in next year's draft budget already, okay. assuming that this would happen. So and you that, recommend it, right? Yes. Okay, so I guess so two more times. Should we have two different motions, I guess? I think that's typically how it's done. But... Yeah. Okay, so I'm looking for. A motion to promote Robert Osterhout. Um, the water maintenance assistant. 
I'll second it. And this will be effective November 2nd, right? 12th. 12th, I mean. Okay, so I have a motion on the second. We have a second. Thanks. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. And the second would be a motion to promote Patrick Van Wagner to motor equipment operator. Okay. Effective on uh, November 12th. You need the rates in there, or they're pretty much standard from yeah the um, salary schedule or the contract. But we get those. At least Saturday, the first day of payroll. So, motion. I got a second. Yes. Okay. Those in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. Those opposed. Yes. Accepted. Um, before we jump, the only other thing is separate. Well, what else? Okay. So, as you know, there's two openings, and we started interviewing. Okay. No, we're not. No. Do we need to go in executive session? No. I was, we, I just have one person that we're recommending for the labor position. So. Okay. I mean, there's nothing I don't think that's personal. <laughs> You know, just going to talk about the name and recommend the salary. So, do we need, if we do that? Uh, I am. I'll just say you're aware of the intent. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of the intent. I mean, I don't think there's anything that's of nature that we needed to go into. Okay. So, on these, so. So, we did a handful of interviews for the laborer after the 140 applications or so. Um, and I do have one gentleman here. Benjamin Narone, that we'd like to recommend to be our laborer downstairs. And that rate is 46, 186.52. And this would be filling, backfilling a maintenance assistant position that was vacated two months ago, a month ago. Have you offered him the position? I, I spoke to him this morning, and he he's seemed well, very excited to join us. Okay, so need a motion to, I guess, what offer the position to Benjamin Narone? Make him over the labor position. I'll second. And I'm like, okay, that would be effective whenever he effective. Starts. Oh, when he accepts. Yeah. At 46, 186, 186, I think. Something change. 186.52. Effective when he's available, right? Yes. Okay, so I have a motion. I have a second. Any further discussion? Okay, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. Okay. Okay. She reminded me I give her a list of things in case I forget something and yeah. I forgot something. So. Okay. That's the only thing I've forgotten. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so far. Um, I, I mentioned this last week with the uh, revenue and the budget that I like to increase all the samples five dollars, but I just wanted to make sure the board is on board with that for the non-city bacteriological test. Yeah, take effect when. January 2nd. Okay. You need a motion to do that? It's not on the fee schedule at the moment. Right? It's never been posted anywhere as far as I can tell. It's just been that way for 20 years. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just what non city residents pay to have their water tested here. So, so it's just the, the non city. Yeah, no, you can, we, we would go test water if somebody had an issue in the city. We so also still have it, test What's water. listed here is private. The laboratory operator on your report. We're going to charge use everybody will be five dollars more. Everybody, private community, and also county. Yes. What's what's so that's thirty. Community, community is other community water systems. 
So that is I what is that? Some of the other water districts, yeah. Like it's, you know, yeah. It's, it's other community. It's other public water supplies. Yeah. Or outside of the city that use your services. Yeah, they need and to that's the, so you get, so the proposal is to raise dollars across the board. all the back bacteriological water sample rates five dollars yep. from right. from from when to when from what to what what is it now so it's 35 30 or 25 depending on which category you're in 35 30 and 25 and that's as it goes down on the list from private yep is, is that in Normal with the other water. Yeah, we look at. I mean, there's really not any other labs in the area. So, no, I mean, we do the samples for do like how holster and sewer. They bring their samples to us. But I mean, we there are labs. There's one in Newburgh. There's okay. one in a commercial one in Stone Ridge. Um, they, they like sell the stuff to you after they test your water. Oh, okay. Um, so but really, really, but we looked at we looked at their prices, and they're in that forty forty five dollar okay. range. So Perfect. that's what we're. Our land the lab tech. Well, so the Ulster County sewer would be considered part of the community samples? Uh, do they fall in the I mean, it's a middle town. Yeah. Yeah, that's the authority turns their samples in. For all our customers. Okay, so we need a motion or this? Yeah. Okay, so look for a motion to look. I'll make the motion to raise the uh, testing rates. Bacteriological water testing rates, five dollars across the board. Okay. Any further discussion? Second. Second. Yeah. Well, Pat raised his hand. Going in, somebody was going to. Jane's pretty good at about picking that up. One of the guys over here. So we have a motion. We have a second. Those in favor. Aye. Opposed? Aaron, thank you. Um, you all done other than the superintendent's report? Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. He's done. He's done. <laughs> what a working. <laughs> um, Quarry Street, any update on that? Quarry? Bill has gone to the school and they responded. Thank you. Because the cost was lower than I initially told them oh, because okay. of the favorable conditions with the excavation. So we haven't so, seen, have we seen money from them or they just got that. Okay. I want to say Monday. Um, I'd heard from Dennis Larry was late last week, I think. So I put that bill together and sent out. I called and made sure who I knew it was going to. It was the prior business assistant superintendent of business retired just after this project started. So okay. Bills and accounts. Hmm? Oh, we're new bills and accounts. I know. Okay, before we get, thank I'll you. Give it, I'll make a motion to accept the bills and accounts as presented. Wait for a second. I'll second. Okay. Uh, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. And then, um, any update on the roundabout? No. No. I don't know, was the meeting or the workshop you were telling me about? I think it was last week. But it's already been bonded at this point, and so now it's just uh, trying to get it back from them. And that could be, I mean, it's been going on now for two years. I mean, when did that project end? And so, a year and a half, two years. But the information that you told us was what I've seen. I mean, I forget the number I don't have in front of me. It was 158,000 or something. I think they that they all us. So. But, but we can't just take it and use it. It's got to be stuck into a would be used for the principal and interest payments. So we have that in escrow. Right? No, they uh, have it. They have it. And they they owe it to us. But they made us pay the entire thing before the project even went to bid. So it's not. But we just can't take that money and put it in our budget. Our budget has to go into escrow and pay down over the next. But essentially, I mean, it would be one less debt service item you'd have to do like an interfund transfer for the debt, debt service payment. Okay. So, I mean, not directly into the budget, but yeah, without that money being returned or paying the bond with our money. I mean, it's all our money, but right. you know, their money. 
Dodi Arbanya or, or, no, or, or, or we're or making some draft documents of final cook. I don't want to say final cost because they're not calling them final of what they spend and expend it on water, and it's not what we paid them. So, but they're not being very responsive and giving me a, the checks in the mail response. Gotcha. So, I mean, I guess at some point in time, a phone call or a meeting with one of our state reps might help. Are they handling it in Region A DOT? I've talked to Mark. I've talked to uh, the other people. I've talked to more often. I can't think of it. They're in that, but they're, 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 they're on the emails. They're they're aware. So uh, gives you are, are, are you in the same boat with the sewer in? Uh, I think our sewer end is over, but I don't think we ever, or at least at that level, I don't think we ever got an accounting though, even though we did ask. Okay, I did get about. I don't know if you were supposed to give it to me, yeah. but I have uh, semi formal accounting. Accounting of it's just a lot. So they have it. Of which they he gave it to me. I did that. Oh, my sure I called them. I'm like, we so came I, in 150,000. I call them. I'm reading it. Than... We sent you a check for this. I, the way I read it is, you, and I never got like a, yeah, you're right. I was, we're waiting on one change order. So <laughs> that change order is probably going to be 150,000. Yeah. 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 Um. So super, last thing is superintendent's report. Any um, issues, questions? So it's interesting to see that our rainfall is actually above to year to date. It is. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, it's until the yeah. It doesn't really paint the picture that no. we lived through. A lot of that rain that we got during the summer was all at one time. Wow. And everything was so dry that that the flow of Macaulay just vanished within hours. So we may have gotten four inches of rain in you know July, but it all came at once and it didn't saturate the ground enough to keep the water flowing. Four inches of rain now. Well, well I mean that's kind of months. The way things have been going with climate change anyway. You get less frequent, but yeah. more severe storms where you're not getting that nice rain of an inch over a day or so. Yeah. It's to look at that chart. It looks like we were doing quite well. Yeah, well, it's not. What do you mean you got a drought? Yeah. No. Well, that's because we had big September and October. Just September was energy. Yes. Yeah, and we'll see what we get <laughs> this week. Yeah. yeah. Another weird one where we'll get dumped with two inches of rain in, you know, half a day or whatever. Yep. Okay. Um, then I'll accept the motion to accept the um, superintendent report. Make a motion to accept any superintendent's reports. Okay, we have a second. Um, okay. Second. okay, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, carry. Motion to adjourn then. I'll make the motion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> want us want to second that? Second. Okay, those in favor? David? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you.